700 international students inside Canada are standing at the verge of being deported from Canada. They might be looking towards their home very soon. Well, guys, this particular news had spread like wildfire in the past couple of weeks. A lot of people came out protesting, strikes, everything happened and there were a couple of decisions from the federal government. Then the federal court also came into the picture just about, you know, a couple of days ago. The appeal division also rendered its decision. So in today's video, we will look at what really happened, what has happened in terms of the decisions also and what can these students expect in terms of their deportations in the times to come. Let's just look at all the details in this video today. Please be tuned till the end. My name is Sahil. Guys, welcome back once again. My name is Sahil and I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant and I practice in Ontario. My office is here. If you have to get in touch with me, my number is on the screen and the details are there in the description box. More than happy to speak with you. Before we proceed any further, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon because we talk a lot about Canadian immigration. And if you are an aspirant of moving to Canada, then this is a channel that you must be subscribed to all the time. So guys, um, a couple of weeks earlier, uh, the news of 700 deportations, 700 international students being deported from Canada had come out open in the public and a lot of people started facing uh, you know, these issues, especially the international students who were here to study. And this particular news had spread like wildfire. And obviously it was very concerning because these 700 students were here to study. And all of those students who had left their homes, spent a lot of money, spent so many years in Canada, had thought that they were almost about to reach towards their permanent residency. when suddenly this bigger bomb of deportation was dropped on them by IRCC. Guys, First, let's talk about what really happened and then we'll talk about what is the standing of the government and then we'll talk about what are the potential things that can happen in the future. First of all, the issue at hand is that uh, as per the government, there are about 700 international students who had acquired um, fake offer letters from colleges in Canada and they came here to study and they switched colleges, they went into different DLIs, which is a designated learning institution. And then because all of their admissions were based on fake offer letters, they should be given, as per the government, they should be given misrepresentation charge, which means they should be treated inadmissible to Canada and hence would be given a five year ban and deported from Canada. This was the standing of the federal government or the immigration department of Canada. Now, um, as per the scenario that, is in, uh, that has been explained by the students, they said that uh, there are a couple of agents in you know, the native countries, for example, India or the other countries, such unregulated, unlicensed agents, uh, education agents, got them fake offer letters for colleges in Canada. These particular offer letters were given to them and the students say that they were not aware of how the offer letters were procured by the agent because they had paid their you know fair share of dues, fees and everything. Then uh, these, the students were issued an offer letter by IRCC, the government itself. So somehow the government issued these offer letters without actually doing a lot of research or a thorough check on the offer letters. And then uh, the students came here. Then the uh, agent in India, as per the students, the agent in India said that uh, your uh, admission has been cancelled or the seats have been filled or whatever. Now we will have to talk about changing your college. So the agent then changed their college, sent them to some other DLI, which again they changed on the IRCC portal or the government portal and they successfully completed their educations in Canada. Post completing the education, they also got their post graduation work permit. Then some of them applied for PR or were about to apply for PR. That is something that will happen in the future. But as per the students uh, status or the standing, they say that uh, they have two issues here. One, they say that they are totally unaware of what these unscrupulous agents or these, you know, um, uh, unregulated agents did in India or anywhere. Second, they are saying that even if they did, why did IRCC at the first place issue the study permit and why did IRCC not check whether the offer letters were, you know, fake in the first place? Because uh, had IRCC not given the permits approval, they would have saved all of that money and stayed in their houses, in, in their country. They would have built themselves a career and then, uh, you know, uh, studied in India or, you know, built themselves, gotten themselves jobs in India. But they spent all of that money and number of years 
here in Canada in the hopes of building a future. So the students say that they are innocent and they don't have any, you know, any uh, participation in this misrepresentation and IRCC should have done their its own bit of checking. IRCC says that they back in time in those years when the study permits were issued, they did not have the right tools, resources to check all of these, uh, you know, offer the validity or the authenticity of these offer letters. Hence, some iota of fault at IRCC's end as well. And IRCC says that if, you know, the students gotten their admission letters, the students should have made more calls to the colleges. They should have done their due diligence. They should not have blindly trusted the agent. So you, you understand this is now a blind, you know, this is a, this is a blame game that has been going on. IRCC says the students should have checked. Students say the IRCC should have checked. Everybody knows that there is some agent out there in the public that is non-licensed, non-regulated, some scamster who did all of this. And smartly, he said he would he would send these students here, change the college and this will all be hidden away. Right. So this is the whole situation that has happened. Now, IRCC very recently realized that all of this was going on and they finally started issuing deportation letters to students. Students in return started filing appeal in terms of challenging this particular deportation. Now, first, the appeal division said that, you know, there is no issue, uh, there is no possibility of stopping these deportations from the immigration department. The deportation is final. The students have engaged in misrepresentation. Even if your agent did that, the student is responsible and that's as, that's as per the law, right? So as per the law, it's clear anything that your agent does, it is your fault. You are supposed to check what your agent is doing. So on behalf of that, IRCC issued deportations and in the appeal division also it was confirmed. Very recently on the 29th of May, which is, you know, just about a couple of days ago, the uh, federal co court where you can go and appeal this particular decision, federal court also upheld the, uh, you know, the ID's decision saying that um, the uh, appeal division is not wrong in assessing misrepresentation because as per the law, uh, students should have checked and they cannot stop the deportation. Now, this is the standing as per the court of law in Canada. And they are saying we cannot, you know, be a party to this and whatever immigration department has to say, it is fine. These to the international students do not have any participation or any say in this to stop this. This is what the government, uh, this is what the court has to say. Now comes the, the federal government. Now immigration department, federal court, and now let's talk about what the government has to say. Now immigration minister, Sean Fraser, very recently. So, you know, all the students were on protest on strike. And then the students started, you know, uh, requesting the government to step in, the prime minister to step in and to have a look into this issue because technically it's a blame game. Somebody should have checked, somebody should have not applied, you know. So uh, both the parties are at slight fault here. So the immigration minister said, let's, you know, he, he took a very smart decision very recently and uh, there was a press release, there was a media release and he came out in the open after all of these protests. He said that they finally stopped or rather temporarily paused the deportations for now. The, the deportations has be, have been frozen. Now, they are not permanently gone for now. They have been frozen and all the 700 cases have gone into further investigation. Now, this particular investigation will be done by senior officials of IRCC and CBSA, which is the, you know, the border security force. So CBSA and IRCC, the senior officials will be looking at all of these 700 cases on a case by case, specific case by case basis. These investigations will be carried out to see how much was the student aware about this particular fault and uh, was the student actually trying to study here? Did the student actually come to Canada? Did he know or did she know about all of this fraud? Um, and did they actually study, you know, all of these things will be investigated and on a case by case, very specific basis, IRCC will render decisions based on the involvement of the party. For example, if uh, the student was party to all of this information, potentially the student will be deported. If the student was totally unaware, but was still a general, you know, genuine bona fide student, the student will be allowed to continue his or her status. So it's a temporary relief that IRCC has given. Uh, to all of these students it's a temporary frozen uh, situation that they've been given all of the cases are being investigated 
and if they are found not guilty or not party to this fraud the students will be given you know continuance of their temporary status and they can then pursue their permanent residence applications there onwards so i personally think that it's a very smart decision uh, you know looking at uh, because both the parties are you know involved in this to some degree of innocence negligence or non checking so i think from the immigration side or the from the minister side it is a good decision where uh, people are you know give are given a second chance of being investigated upon and if they are not party to this particular information then they would be given a clean shit and they can continue their pathway to permanent residence in canada guys um overall what i would say is that the court of law cannot give um these students under humanitarian grounds they cannot give um uh, a relief to these students i know a lot of people would be thinking that why can't the court just give a clean shit guys canada follows common law and here a precedence once set will be rolled upon into the into the future cases and if court of uh, law in canada gives clean shit to one student then it will be a roller coaster effect for the future students so a lot of fraudsters will start using this they will start sending people here and ultimately they will claim Uh, an appeal and then you know the court of law will have to follow the past precedents and they will have to follow all of this so the co- under common law practices humanitarian situations only have a degree to somewhat of an acceptance beyond that it cannot be uh, you know accepted because of common law so um, you know federal court has its own standing humanitarian situations are separate those are humanitarian files and you know this particular situation i think is being smartly dealt by the immigration minister it's a good decision and then now depends upon each case by case basis of how they are going to be dealt this also gives immigration uh, you know uh, an eased up way to hold this uh, you know this protest situation uh, momentarily and then probably in the background they can start issuing whatever decisions they want to issue this way they are you know diplomatically or politically holding the situation as well hopefully um i truly wish that these students uh, are not party to this fraud sir uh, i am i'm pretty sure that you know these students are pretty innocent well uh, we will know on a case by case basis once ircc investigates them further guys this is the whole scenario about the 700 students being deported from canada they are on hold for now they are uh, you know being kept in canada for now no deportations at least for the next couple of weeks or months till the time ircc holds its investigations guys I hope the news was a relief to a lot of students and gave you much insights into what's happening in the world of immigration in Canada. If you want to know anything further, please feel free to schedule a consultation with us. We would be more than happy to speak with you. Once again, we wish you all the best and we really hope to see you soon in Canada. All the best.